Well, hello everybody. It's Danny back from Deep South Homestead on porch time. Guys, I'm going to tell you this weather is about as wacky as I think I have ever seen the weather. Um, here we are getting ready for tomorrow. We're supposed to have possible severe weather. And, I mean, and it hasn't been cold. I mean, it's, we've had some very nice mornings now. When I say nice, I mean 50s and 60s in the mornings. Now, the days are still getting up in the mid to high 80s with heat indexes in the 90s. Uh, but hopefully, after tomorrow, we're going to cool down back into the mid 40s again. And uh, that will be a blessing. Now, here we are all the way to the end of October, just about, and still doing the roller coaster on the weather thing. <clears throat> it's not like it was when I was a child. Not even when I was a teenager, because when I was a teenager on October the 17th, the day that I should have died, there was ice on the ground here. That was the day I had a, I was in a horrendous car accident, and they didn't expect me to live on that day. Uh, but there was ice on the ground that day, and I was bundled in big heavy jackets and all that, and that was 1977. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I was, I was a young adult, but the thing about it was, it was that cold then, and I don't ever remember it being that cold again. Now before then, yes, all of my younger years and all, October the 1st, my daddy would take me squirrel hunting and it would always be cold. We'd have a jacket on. The fair would come here in the, the September the 25th to the 28th, somewhere in that area. And everybody wore jackets and sweaters and everything to the fairs here and all. And it don't do that anymore. Uh, back in the 60s and 70s, yeah, the weather was cold in, in the early part of the year, but not anymore. Uh, we've gone out of that cycle. Now we are going. We have gone back into. I know a lot of y'all think that it's a conspiracy, but it's not. The Grand Solar Minimum is actually real. Uh, science has proved it. And if you just study solar history, you will find out it's there. It happens every 11 years, and then every 400, there's a massive one. And we are. Uh, April of last year, we went into the big one, which is the grand one. And, you know, is anything massive going to happen? We're not going to freeze over and all that kind of stuff. It's just about the weather, guys. Weather will be extreme. If it's hot, it will be extremely hot. If it's cold, it'll be extremely cold. If the weather's beautiful, it'll be extremely beautiful. If it's severe weather, it'll be extremely severe. It's all about extremes. And the geomagnetic field around the Earth is relaxed, allowing more solar flares, solar winds, and all that stuff to hit the Earth. There's lots of things that happens. I mean, guys, I mean, that's just, it is what it is. And, but we're there. And that's what's going to bring me to what I'm going to talk about today. I want to talk about the simple fact and I'm going to tie a Bible in with it. Those of you who don't like the Bible, I'll just have to tell you, you just have to go somewhere else because um, I would like to see you in heaven, you know, uh, one day. Uh, but if you choose not to believe the Bible and you choose to go another route and you want to die and spend an eternity in hell, I, I can't change that, you know. I mean, and I'm not going to try. Uh, that's your prerogative. We all have freedom to choose. Uh, God doesn't push himself on anybody, and I'm not trying to push a particular religion or anything like that. I don't believe in that. As uh, a matter of fact, I don't even believe in being religious. I just believe in being a born-again believer. I think religion sends a lot of people to hell. Um, anyway, let's get off of that. Now, back to where we were. Uh, when we talk about what's going on with the weather... What's going on with our food supply? What's going on in the world in general? A lot of it ties in with the weather. And then a lot of it ties in with mankind. A lot of, a lot of it, uh, well, there again, I'm going to say something, you may not believe it, but a lot of it ties in with weather manipulation. Uh, I actually sat and, I have actually sat and watched a machine 
create clouds and within an hour out of a perfectly blue sky and the, and the clouds that that machine put out within an hour it rained from those clouds it's called seeding it's called cloud seeding um, they do a lot of it in california uh, they've done it in other places um, and, it, and it really exists uh, the fact of the matter is a lot of your big huge cities and stuff like that create so much heat from the concrete asphalt and I call it the concrete jungle in there, create so much heat that they create their own weather around that city. I've sit and watched, uh, back used two years ago, I watched the Weather Channel. When I watch TV, I don't watch TV no more, so I don't watch it anymore. But the Weather Channel talked about how that big cities like Atlanta and these big, you know, big Chicago, these places like this, they create so much heat, uh, New York City and all, that they create severe thunderstorms around that city because of the amount of heat that they create. So we know that whatever happens here on the earth, weather can be created. Now, a lot of people want to say, oh, that's stupid. Well, if you don't want to believe it, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, I just know what I've seen in my life. And with that being said, guys, I want to talk about the topic today. It has begun. Now, any of you that's ever sit down, there's a, there's a movie out there. I watched this year. I watched this, gosh, my former wife that passed away with cancer was still alive. Uh, so it had to be 10, 12, maybe 14 years ago. Uh, I watched a movie about Joseph in the Bible. Uh, it was on, I, I got a DVD and put, I put it in and I watched it on my TV. Uh, about the plagues of Egypt and the famines and all this kind of stuff. And, and I really believe God used that then for now. Because there was one particular segment in that movie. You know, the rest of it was just kind of just a movie to me. But uh, there was one thing in it that stuck out in my mind. And it's still today. I still see that same scene in my mind. Uh, Joseph had walked out of the palace with his small son beside him and he was looking out over the the plain of the of the of the Nile River all the fertile plain and all the food because he had done been told by the Lord he had interpreted a dream for the Pharaoh about 7 years of plenty and then there was going to be 7 years of lean or famine and Joseph had been really enjoying those seven years of plenty, stockpiling food. The people had food. He had stockpiled food and everything for, for, for that time because that's what the Pharaoh had set him up to do. In preparation, he prepared for what was coming. And as Joseph stood on the, on the porch of that palace, looking over the Nile and... Uh, he looked out across all that fertile land, and I still remember the scene. There was this huge dust storm coming, and everything was just like being burnt up. And, as, and I'm getting chills right now because I still remember that on that movie. It was so realistic. He looked at it, he saw that giant dust storm coming, and things withering with it as it came. He looked up to the heavens and he said, It has begun. He said, Son, get inside the palace. It has begun. And what he meant was, the seven years of plenty was over. Dearth was coming. Famine was coming into the land. And guys, that's what I'm here today to tell you. America has enjoyed plenty for many, many years. God has been very kind to this country and the fact that it's been blessed <clears throat> beyond measure. But we have done so much wicked for so long that our cup is full. Just like the Amalekites in the Bible. You know, God said their cup of iniquity is full. They had to be destroyed. That's where we're at as a nation. Our cup of iniquity is full. We have shook our fist in God's face. We have slaughtered the innocent, both in children 
and in ravaging other countries for our own personal gain, now, whether you, however you want to look at it, Vietnam was, was over rubber. I mean, all these different wars we've had has been over whatever we wanted, we just took, which was not right. And as a result, we have shed innocent blood, both with ravaging other countries and taking unborn lives. And those, that, that blood, just like Abel's blood in the beginning, the Lord, when he talked to Cain, he says, where is thy brother? And Cain's like, oh, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said, his blood cries out to me. All of this innocent blood has cried out to God. And it has come up before him in his nostrils, and it is a stench to him. And now judgment must befall this country. And guys, it has begun. I listened this past week to a billionaire who not only is he over food, he's over oil, he's over, I mean, he's over all kinds of uh, big department stores, I mean, all this kind of stuff. And he said, as I watched him talk, he said, you know, the prices of everything in the next few months is going to almost double and triple on a lot of things. Now, if you've got a billionaire saying that about stuff he owns and he has stock in everywhere, He's just telling people, he said, he said, it's fixing to hit, and it's fixing to hit hard. Guys, I, I was, we went into Piggly Wiggly the other day. Now, that's a, little, that's a little store that's in our town here. It was actually created back in the early 1900s up in, I think it was up around Memphis somewhere. It was the first one. Kind of a weird name, though, Piggly Wiggly. But uh, technically, it was a, one of the first stores you could go into where you could do your own shopping and the guy at the front desk didn't go get your groceries for you. Gave you, a cho gave you a choice. And when we was in this Piggly Wiggly the other day, we were picking up some, a few little odd men things that we uh, like wash, you know, uh, laundry detergent, things like that that we just don't make ourselves anymore. I mean, we have the stuff to make it, but we save it in case we can't get it. But as long as it's on sale, we go get it. And guys, I watched people with buggies. And I, and I don't know how people do it. I'm going to just be honest with you. I, I don't know how they do it. But people spending $200 and $300 for a buggy's full of groceries and stuff. What kind of money do they make to be able to do that? I mean, I... If that's what they spend a week, do you realize how much that is a month? That's $1,200 a month just for groceries. I, that's beyond me. I, 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 I'm like, I don't, I don't make that kind of money. I don't know where people come up with this kind of money at. But to me, it just shows where we're at. And, and, and it, the point I'm trying to make is this. This billionaire says stuff's going to double. Some of it may be triple. If they're paying two and $300 for a buggy load of groceries and it doubles, I mean, we're talking four to $600 every couple, every week, even if it's every two weeks. I mean, my gosh, who pays that? I mean, me and Wanda... If we go in a store and come out, if we've spent thirty or forty dollars, I'm freaking out. I'm like, we got to do something, you know, because I just don't believe in giving my money to stores. I just, I just like that. I just, if I can raise it, and I don't trust the food in the stores. I mean, that's just it. Uh, now I occasionally eat some oatmeal, and I can't raise oatmeal here. Uh, I have to have it for my intestinal tract. Uh, and, and if I can get organic oatmeal, I try to, but when I call companies and I ask them, look, this is an organic product, uh, can you guarantee me that it was not harvested using Roundup? And I'm going to tell you something. A lot of them look at me and say, sir, it was grown organically. 
I said, that's not what I'm asking you. USDA says it has to be grown organically. Was it harvested organically? Because nine times out of 10, they come in and spray these crops and kill them all at the same time. All food crops is done that way just about. And they said, sir, all we can tell you is it was grown organically. So I say, you have no idea how it was harvested. And many of them will just say, sir, all I can tell you is it was grown organically. You know, so I have to be very careful about how much of it I eat because of the Roundup residue that's in it. Um, and, and, you know, everything around us, guys, we're fixing to see some of the worst stuff we've ever seen. Stuff that we can't even imagine is going to happen is going to happen. And, and we're sitting back here because it has begun. The hand of God has been lifted off of this nation. Now the hand of God was lifted off of the nation of Egypt where the, and the children of Israel lived in the nation of Egypt. But the children of Israel did not fall to the plagues that hit the Egyptians because they were God's people. God protected them. And if you are God's person and you are keeping His commandments and His, His will like, like you should, then guys... Whatever happens to this country, I do believe if you're a child of God, you will not suffer as many of the consequences as the, as the rest of the lost nation will. Now, I, I believe, uh, Wanda and I, every day when we pray, I always pray, Lord, make my homestead a Goshen in the midst of this evil country, Egypt, that we live in, because the word, Egypt in the Bible was a picture of sin, and, and I think that that's where we're at. Our country's sin right now, and we're in, the, we're in the midst of a sinful nation. That's the reason the Lord said, Come out from among her, and be ye separate. Don't be partakers of, of what she partakes in, and all this kind of stuff, but come out from among her, and be ye separate. Thus saith the Lord. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to come out from among her, not partake of her food, uh, not partake of anything of her pleasures and her luxuries, like TV's a luxury, I think. We don't participate in that. All these different things we try not to participate in, and we try not to indulge in her wickedness. We don't do casinos. We don't do restaurants. We don't do all this stuff. You ever wonder why it says in the book of Revelations that in the latter days of the age in which we're living in, people were eating and drinking? Oh, stop there. <laughs> people were eating and drinking. You ever stop to think about what that means? When did fast food restaurants come on the scene? Best if my memory serves me correct, it was around 1946 to 48, somewhere in that area. Right about the time nation, uh, the nation of Israel become a nation again, and God's time clock began to click again, um, the day in which we live in, everybody goes out and eats, and you don't ever see nobody bowing their head praying. They just said, all you can eat. They run and grab it, and they just gobbling it up like gluttons. And um, the people don't know how to eat a fair share of a meal anymore. I mean, I've been to people's houses, and I look at their plates, and I'm like, you see how big my eyes got? That's how big my eyes get under. I'm like, y'all going to eat all that? I mean, one and I, we just eat little small portions of food. You know I mean? We don't eat a lot. And I look at their plates. I mean, some of them have two and three hot dogs on a plate and, you know, piled up with French fries and chips and all this kind of stuff. And I'm sitting back going, oh, my gosh, how big is your stomach? I'm like, I'm just blown away. And, and it's just, that's the world we live in. In the latter days of this age, people are eating and drinking because it's available. God has blessed us. It's, food was everywhere. But it has begun. And I'm going to tell you something. Because it has begun, that food is now going to become scarce. And people who are used to eating all these all-you-can-eat meals and all this kind of stuff, you better start training your system now to not eat all this stuff or you better start raising a lot of food. I mean, that's just all I can say. 
Uh, Wanda and I, we raise a lot of food. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, we raise a lot of food because we try to not only have enough to eat every day, but we have enough to store up in case something happens to one of us and we physically cannot get out and get in the garden for any length of time, we got something to fall back on. But guys, for as far as our country's concerned, it's begun. I mean, everywhere you look, everything is in a crisis mode. And if y'all remember, I did a video here uh, over on Patreon, I believe it was, I'd done it over there, uh, talked about I bought the last of every, that, that was a one day there for some strange reason. I went online buying stuff. I went to town, had to buy some stuff. Everything I bought that day, the person looked at me or, the, or on the internet, the people I talked to said, you just bought the last we had. And I mean, I bought a lot of stuff that day and every person I talked to told me, said, you just bought the last we had. And you talk about opening my eyes. I'm like, well, how long will it be before you get something else to another one? Lots of things they told me we won't be getting anymore. It's discontinued. A lot of things they said, I don't know. We've had it on order now for six months and we hadn't got it yet. You just bought the last we had. And I was like, wow. So it has begun. And it's going to be blamed on, uh, how to say this <laughs> without getting in trouble. Uh, it's going to be blamed on those who didn't receive this. I, you know, that's what it's going to be blamed on. And the crazy thing about this is, why are the people who had this scared to death of those who haven't? Because if this really works, you shouldn't be worried. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You should be like, well, I'm okay now. But no. No. They've got you scared to death. And I'm, I'm totally appalled at how fast God's people fell for that. I, I'm just blown away. They scared them with death. And I'm like, you belong to God. If you die, you're going to heaven. Why would you be afraid? But nope, God's people were some of the first to cave. And I, I was just like, I told Wanda, me and Wanda sit back and we was like, I've never seen such faithlessness in my life. You know, I mean, I have faced death so many times in my life. It's not a pleasant thing to face. I've been given zero chance several times in my life of surviving. But for some strange reason, God kept me here. And guys, let me tell you something. I love the Lord. I'm just going to say it. I love him. He's been good to me. He's brought me through some of the worst tragedies in life. I've lost a spouse. I've lost my health. I've lost the ability to walk twice in my life. Had to crawl to learn how to walk again. Guys, I've seen the hand of God. And I believe in the hand of God. And when I tell you it has begun, it has begun. It is, we're not, this is not some lull in the system. No, it has begun. The foothold has got in the doorway and they're not going to let up. You're going to see more earthquakes. You're going to see more volcanoes. You're going to see more severe weather. You're going to see more drought. You're going to see more people hate each other. You're going to see people rising up against the governments. You're going to see kingdom against kingdoms. You're going to see nations against nations. You're going to see earthquakes in weird places. You're going to see volcanoes happening that shouldn't have happened because they shouldn't even be going off. You're going to see all this kind of stuff happen. You're going to see the love of many wax cold. And I could just keep on going. Because it has begun, guys. And guys, I'm looking for, a, in the midst of all of this, I am looking for peace in the midst of all of this. And that is why we created the, uh, the podcast that we have. We have a podcast. Uh, we do two podcasts a week. One, 
uh, I talk about the simpler times of life because when I talk about the simpler times of life, it really just brings me back home and it kind of calms me down and it makes me enjoy my journey a lot more. And I try to share that with other people. I talk about old times and all things that, you know, just things to re reminisce about the older ways and talk about some of the things that like sitting on the front porch or, or sipping tea with someone or making cane syrup or, you know, all these types of things, sitting down by the lake watching the fish or sitting in a tree stand watching wildlife in the woods. All this kind of stuff, I talk about that in the journey as a child with your father and things to this nature. And then we do the one called Flashback Friday where I go back and I pull some of my old porch times that people really, really liked and I put them over on a podcast and, and I talk about them. And then I replay that porch time over there for people to enjoy. Maybe some that people haven't heard in a long time. And a total different audience over there with a lot of people. And, and guys, we don't make a dime off of it. But it, it really it really just in, it helps me to enjoy it. Now, we've, we've since we started doing the podcast, we were on Spotify, we are on iTunes, and about 10 other different platforms. But we just... We just started moving stuff over to our web page. And if you want to watch the podcast, you can go over to our web page and click on it right there. You don't have to download nothing. You can watch it right there. And and you can just enjoy it. And, and that, that's what we do it for. We do the podcast so that we can just find some kind of normalcy to this wicked, crazy world that we're living in since it has begun. And I've already had over 6,000 downloads on it. And I'm, I'm like, wow. So people are enjoying it, and you might enjoy it too if you go over and watch it. Uh, you can go to our webpage, or you can go to iTunes or Spotify and just type in Deep South Homestead, and, and it, it should take you right to it. You know, a lot of people don't like downloading the apps and stuff like that, but uh, it wasn't a problem for me. It didn't take five seconds to do it. And, uh, I watch a lot of other places over. I watch A Fistful of Dirt with uh, Cuz Strickland. I love the guy from Mossy Oak Properties. I mean, I've watched him for... <laughs> he's like an icon to me. He's like an, almost like a, I don't worship nobody, but if I had to have an idol, it probably would be Cuz. Um, because I can relate to him on so many different levels. And he came here and we got a chance to enjoy fellowship with one another. And, and just great guy, y'all. Go watch Fistful of Dirt podcast also. Him and his daughter Lauren came here. And just a total blessing to Wanda and I. And, and if you want to watch him, on, he used to be on a program called Hunting the Country with Mossy Oak. Um, and then he's got all kind of hunting videos out there. I mean, guys, you just really would enjoy him. Um, but, you know, I, wanted to, I just want to do this video today to help us to understand our free ride in life is about to be over here in the free country. Uh, our freedoms are gradually being taken from us because, just to be honest, it has begun. Things are fixing to get very difficult, guys. And I want you to be aware of that. I'm not trying to be a fear monger. I'm just trying to be realistic. And tell you, don't be afraid. Don't fall prey to everything that's around. Don't believe half of what you hear. Like my dad used to tell me, don't believe none of that you hear, son. Don't believe anything you hear and only half of what you see. And I've, and I've, ab I've abode by that for many years. And, and I still live by that. Uh, I like to talk to people one-on-one -on -one to get information. Uh, I'm not big on links and stuff like that. Because, uh, I mean, anybody can make anything up. I really like to talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. And, and that's been my... That's been a blessing to me for many, many years to be able to meet people and talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. So guys, with that being said, uh, before the weather gets too bad, I got to get out of here and get a few things taken care of. I've got a few big, massive projects underway, and I've got to make sure I get them at least to a certain point before all this severe weather moves in here. So, thank you for watching Porch Time. Uh, we really appreciate it. We love each and every one of you. And guys, I pray that you'll go over to the podcast also and watch them, or not watch them, but listen to them. And uh, maybe they'll bless you like they have a lot of other people. We've got a lot of messages from people saying, wow. That sure did calm me down, Brother Danny. And I hope it's a blessing to you guys too. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.